Hi there, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts and today we're going to do a little practice swatch so that you can do Hannah's, oh, she's gonna call it her Puff Stripes Baby Blanket. This is the typical um, moss stitch that we, well, that we call and she's added in some puff uh, stitches here, every other one. But I wanna teach you uh, how she's weaving in the ends as she goes so that you won't have a nightmare of ends to weave in at the end of the project. So we're using Bernat Baby Softy. She's got two colors in her blanket, but I didn't have that second color. And this is a G hook, a four millimeter, but I believe she used a 4.5. So you'll have to test your own gauge and see what you think. But go ahead and um, any type of yarn will work just for our practice swatch. I'm gonna work a chain of 40 in the white. All right, so I just did 40 chains and all you really need, you, you can make this blanket any size you'd like, just keep your number an even number and you'll be fine, you'll be good to go. So we're gonna start working into the fourth chain from the hook and we're gonna work a single crochet. Now I'm also going to teach you this as if you are more of an advanced beginner or an intermediate because this is not a beginner friendly pattern. Um, a typical, just the moss stitch only would be, would be pretty uh, beginner, but since we're doing adding in the puffs, I'm gonna discourage you if you're a beginner from, from doing this blanket. So I'm going to kind of skip over a lot of beginner things I would normally say in my videos and just kind of work as if you already know um, this stitch. So I'm skipping a chain and I'm working a single crochet into the next chain. This is a pretty typical linen stitch, moss stitch. It's, I swear it's got a hundred different names, but anyway, on at, Hannah and I have decided we just are gonna call it a moss stitch to keep it standard on our website. So go ahead and just continue working your moss stitch across the row single crochet, chain one, skip the chain, and work into the next one. And um, I'll meet you at the end of the row. All right, with this particular um, linen moss stitch, oh, I'm going to chain two and turn. And go ahead and, and this chain two sort of acts like the first, um, stitch but I, you skip this single crochet and work underneath the chain or into the chain space with a single crochet and then chain one skip over the single crochet work underneath the chain with a single crochet chain one gonna continue across the row just like that. We're gonna do three rows of this before we introduce any color. So chain two and turn at the end of the row just like we just did and get one more row done and work across. And then just before we finish that last stitch, stitch of the third row, I'm gonna add in the pink. Oh, I wanted to jump back on here to make sure you see that the last stitch of every row, the last single crochet is worked in between the turning chain and that last single crochet. So you can definitely just insert your hook. You don't need to find the top of a turning chain or anything. Just work underneath those chains. There's a nice big hole between the single crochet and the turning chains. Chain two turn skip over that single crochet that you just worked and work underneath that chain there you go now work across this last row and we're going to introduce those that color and i'll show you how we're going to carry along and hide the ends as we go All right, I'm right here at the end of my third row. I've worked partially my single crochet. I'm just going to lay my new color over the edge of the hook, 
pull it through and I will chain two and turn. Now, I'm also going to cut off the white at this point. I'm gonna leave about, oh, six inches of tail, maybe a little bit more, because we're gonna bring it with us. We're gonna crochet over the ends. Now this end, our original starting tail, we'll leave that one out. We'll have to weave that one in. But this one that we just caught up, that we just trimmed off, go ahead and tuck it back behind you. We're gonna carry it along with us and crochet over it, as well as this pink one. And don't worry, we're gonna be able to disguise it. You won't even know. But this will help you with this pattern to make it somewhat more enjoyable because we do change colors a lot. Okay. So here we are, we're going to work our very first, whoops, single crochet right underneath our chain space, just like we've been doing. But go ahead and work underneath those tails too. Bring them right along with you. Pop that up, work your chain. Oops, I've kind of got that loose. Chain one. Now we're going to work that puff stitch. We're going to yarn over, insert your hook underneath the chain space. It will always be a moss stitch. Pull up. We're going to do this three times. Kind of hard to do that. I got to hold on to it here. There's two and there's three. My best advice is to kind of keep them up and tight so that you can easily pull through. And even then it's tricky and then add your chain. Now the next one will just be a single crochet, just like that. Chain one. So essentially we're working single crochet, chain one, puff stitch, chain one. Repeat. Two. And that puff is going to be three yarn overs. Chain. I'm keep keep bringing this along with you and it's what we do on the next row that's going to really disguise that yarn that we're carrying around okay do you have it maybe I should do one more puff and really explain to you what I'm doing here hopefully I'm going slow enough that you can see those puffs next stitch single crochet, chain one, here's this puff. It's kind of like a, just a, it's a half double crochet, cluster, puff, oh, a million names. Yarning over, inserting my hook, pulling up a loop, just stopping right there, yarning over again, going right back into the same space, pull up a loop, for some reason, I always just like to make sure I keep that really loose. Last time, that was it, three, and then pull through all those loops. And a puff sort of looks the same on both sides of the blanket. That's why we love it so much. Hannah loves it a lot. And I keep mentioning Hannah, and in case you're not a follower of the farm, um, Hannah is my daughter, and she designed this pattern. It's beautiful. Oh, I got off. There we go. I think I better stop talking and just let you finish out this row. And then I'll show you what we're going to do to hide the yarn further. Okay, keep going and alternating. All right, did you make it all the way to the end? I want to show you that um, your last stitch will still be a single crochet. Worked in between that last, you know, same thing. Kind of find the side of that turning chain, pull up, stop right there. You can cut or pull through with the new color. Either way, you're fine. But you're going to want to cut that off because we just used one row of it. Pull through with your new color, the white. We're going to work three rows of the um, moss stitch here. But let me show you what we're going to do to dis further disguise those ends. I chain two, I turn, 
Okay, we're still gonna carry along this new yarn with us. It's when we get to the other end of the blanket. Well, this is our just our little swatch. Okay, now another thing I want you to be aware of, still don't be tempted to skip over this puff. You have a stitch in here. This is actually your chain space right here. So make your first single crochet right there to this side of that puff. Make sure you don't miss that chain. Carry these along. Here's your chain space. Now we're back to just single crochet chain. I'm carrying those over. Now I will say one side of the puff will, you know, look a little bit easier to to find. Just make sure you're doing either side. It's because that little chain kind of closed up the puff stitch. Now these are my ends from the row below. Okay, leave those hanging out. After I did about 10, 10 or so, yeah, maybe kind of pull it, make it, just leave those hanging. You'll come back and just have to clip those. But here we go, this is what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna leave these hanging behind because keep in mind, you'll be doing a big blanket. Now when we get to this section here of these ends that are now facing us, you are going to reach your hook down underneath them and pull them right up next to the, the underside of the work. Ah, trust me, you'll be able to do this. And through the back, and it pulls them right up to the underside. So that these ends are gonna be kind of crocheted up and over. There we go. And then you won't even see them. So this is your time saver. A little bit tedious when you're learning it, but as you go, you really get into a good rhythm and it's not a problem at all. And of course, it really does depend on the yarn that you that you choose to work with. This little Bernat baby, it's pretty small. But if you're using, you know, larger yarn, you might be able to grab those ends just a little bit. And now keep in mind, it's just this row that you're gonna struggle with towards, and it's only towards the end of the rows, like maybe the last 10 stitches on either end, you know, the middle of the blanket, you won't have to do this. But you just wanna secure those ends right up underneath there. And I think it's a whole lot faster than leaving them out and then having a whole bunch to weave in at the end. And then you'll get that pretty little blanket. Okay, so this is why I'm saying it is not a beginner-friendly blanket. I would not want a beginner to have to struggle to find this, and I think it's just a little bit too tedious for a beginner. Sorry, but you know what? I always say, if you watch this, and maybe, you, maybe you're maybe you only telling yourself you're a beginner, and you should just give this a try. So I think I went down too far on that one. Okay, you guys, I think you've got it. Let me show you the swatch so you can see it again. Just work your three rows of the moss, one row of the alternating puff, single, puff, single. There's little chains in there. And then do three more rows. Now, of course, Hannah alternated these colors. And you could do any color in between. This could be a beautiful rainbow blanket, any colors that you want. Um, I think these are great for like, you know, just those extra scraps. If you only have one color left, a tiny bit left on your, you know, of a ball of yarn, it's a great way to use this up. And this is a darling, darling blanket. More pictures are on our website, daisyfarmcrafts.com. Thank you everybody for always coming by and being so kind and leaving the kindest comments. We are just a mom and daughter team sharing what we're making. Um, I'm, uh, call myself, uh, grandma in training just hopeful for the day that i'll become a grandma so anyway thank you so much we'll see you next time